Hi, my name is Leslie Anderson. I'm the Director of Collections, Exhibitions, and Programs here at the National Nordic Museum in Seattle. I'm pleased to welcome you to a conversation between two Swedish leaders and innovators, Gudrun Sjöldin, whose career is currently the subject of an exhibition that's dazzling at the National Nordic Museum, and Petra Helleberg. This is the first event in the National Nordic Museum's Nordic Women in Leadership series, and it's also part of the Nordic Innovation Series, which is an extension of the Virtual Nordic Innovation Summit 2020. Thank you to our special guests, fashion designer and CEO Gudrun Chivian. Her company of the same name has styled women all over the world in its over 40 year span. And Petra uh, Hilleberg, who is honorary Swedish consul and CEO of Hilleberg the Tent Maker. She heads a family company with over 50 years of tent making experience. I now turn it over to you, Petra and Gudrun. Well, thank you so much, Leslie. Um, thank you for having us. And most importantly, Gudrun, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Nice to be with you. Yes. Um, I'm really sorry that we can't do this in person so that we could uh, both look at your uh, beautiful exhibit and uh, have this conversation, but that is hopefully another time in the future we can we can do that. Um, yeah, I really hope to come to Seattle because we had planned this, but it, it didn't work because of the Corona problems. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, but um, so I want to start out. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you got? Here. So how did you get started with, um, with fashion and designing clothing? Yeah, <clears throat> I started a long time ago and uh, I uh, um, was studying in art school in the, in the beginning and I was working as a designer, a freelance designer. And um, I made my collections uh, in about the same idea as I do now. Uh, but uh, I didn't um, uh, reach uh, with my, my connection, collection uh, to the customers. Uh, so I decided uh, that I really need to uh, make my own brand so I could reach my customers directly. Because I did know that they are there. Yeah. So you already knew from the beginning that there was a need for what you do. Oh uh, yes, yes, I really did uh, because I have always had a lot of contact with my <clears throat> my customers. So I, I mean, they talk to me and they want to. <clears throat> um, when I meet people on the street and so on, they they come in front of me and ask uh, questions. So I have a lot of uh, of um, contact with uh, with my customers. So I know what they want and 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 so on. Okay, so like the, the truly grassroots way yeah. of uh, of going forward um i looked through your designs and um or some of your your book and and also the museum exhibit which i hope people can see soon and what i thought was really interesting is that you can see even from the very beginning in um the late 60s 70s you could see a thread throughout your designs. You can pretty much always say that this is a Gudrun Shudian uh, item. And I, I would say that's unusual in the fashion industry, in the fashion world, right? I think one of the main reasons is that I have this uh, personal contact with the customers. So they give me the answer all the time uh, that I do it right or I do it wrong. And um, also I'm uh, designing a lot for myself, what I like and what is, um, what is my needs about colors or, or um, fitting or so on. So I think that's the reason uh, that I have this, uh, that this contact all the time. To me, it, it also looks like um, it, it needs a very uh, self-confident, person to do that when there's so many train trends changing all the time to stick with what you are what you know and what you want would you say mm, yeah yes yes I, and i think the reason is really the the contact with the customers and also <laughs> the contact with my own soul i think yeah 
Yeah. It's funny. So, so my business, we, we make tents, uh, backpacking tents. So obviously definitely not fashion at all, but I see a lot of parallels with that and how my dad started 50 years ago with uh, finding a product that he needed and that his friends needed and then sticking with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like looking at your designs, you've really stuck with uh, mm -hmm. what you've done, no matter what the market, would you say? Yeah, and also I have also during all the years has a lot of contact with my suppliers, the producer of the goats. So this is also a, a, a very important part of what I'm doing that I understand how the textile production is is made, yeah. and um, they try to <laughs> to uh, get uh, um, what shall I say? They try to. Uh, not doing what I want to do, but I, I they can't uh, uh, avoid my knowledgement. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, uh, so the textile part is also very important for the for the development of the, of the collections that I know the textile production production very well. So does that mean that there might be an idea that you have for a garment but it can't be made and also the other way around that you go to a textile fabric and you get inspired is that mm. yes 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 earlier i traveled a lot to the to the the suppliers in india and china and so on uh, but nowadays i have not really so much time to travel and meet them but um, I think this um, connection with the suppliers and the, the wor workers are very, very important to be able to produce uh, the kind of design and products that I'm doing. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, and uh, I have a long relationship with most of the suppliers, so they really want to do what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's also so important that relationship with the suppliers and being able to you know have a mutual trust. I think there's so many suppliers that come and go that have the latest and greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not and we are not looking after the lowest price either. Exactly. We want to have good, nice products. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that I think is interesting in in yours uh, in your line is that you're looking at function. Uh, yeah. maybe more than fashion to some extent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can combine it, but function first, mm -hmm. um, which seems a little bit unusual also in the fashion industry, would you say? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the, the sustainable part of uh, producing is also very important for me. And it's also important for the suppliers because they don't, they also want to make it, make uh, the, the production sustainable. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have the same goal, I must say. Yeah. So you were uh, doing sustainable and, and, um, and, and best practices like that before it was trendy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yes, I, I, my first uh, um, sustainable collections I made in the beginning of the 90s. So it's a long time ago. Yeah. It's a long time ago. And it was a, a couple of guys in Greece. Uh, they had begun to uh, produce um, uh, organic cotton and we find each other. Nice. Um, <laughs> but I also liked one of the things that you say in your book, um, which is also our philosophy, is that making something that lasts is one mm -hmm. of the most sustainable thing that you can do. Of course, there's, there's um, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing and materials that go, go into it. But mm -hmm. even if you have the most green material if that falls apart really fast that's mm -hmm. not sustainable yeah yeah i think it's the function of the, the clothing is a, a very important part if you find the clothing or the jacket or the skirt very comfortable and 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 good in function you wear it a long time yeah. instead of buying something new exactly but I feel like that would, that is pretty unique in the fashion industry, wouldn't you say? 
That's a unique yes. view. Uh, I, I think one of the reasons is also that I am the CEO also, uh, the designer. So I can, I, I mean, I, I know the finance part also. And I have always said to myself, what we are doing should be <clears throat> profitable. Then we can also afford to develop new things. So yeah. this is also an important part instead of, uh, of um, trying to uh, make everything very fast and, uh, and so on. Yeah. Um, so I think knowing the finance part is, is uh, uh, also very important to be able to do what you want to do. Exactly. I think that's really a, a very good point. That's something that we, um, we also had to press uh, quite a bit that sustainability is again it's not just organic cotton it's also making sure that you have a sustainable business so that you can continue doing good and doing well yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. i think that's also now during the corona crisis i mean uh, uh, the all my customers is really st uh, staying with us and by st still going on buying from us instead of stop buying but they don't buy in the stores they only buy by uh, by the e-commerce side from the e-commerce yeah so so uh, we are very happy uh, about how the situation is for us right now that's great you know, and a lot of custom uh, or a lot of companies are, are starving yeah really um i think that again can, can be contributed to to making a product that people mm -hmm. Uh, need right mm. that um, yeah. or mm. that has a value I think um, you know investing in products rather than mm. you know the things that we bought just because it was fun mm. Mm. and I think also I mean many customers really think that they know me <laughs> personally <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think this is also a, a, a very important side that yeah. people think this lady she's producing good things and i like her and and i like the clothing she's doing yeah um i looked at that I mean, you have an amazing amount of brand loyalty yes yes really really yeah. and not now during the the corona it's uh, it's fantastic i must say yeah oh that's that's nice how would you say that um that your female customers are different in different markets are they different? No, not not very different. Uh, not uh, I must say, it's about the same. Uh, maybe in Sweden they are a little bit <laughs> more blue and more boring than the American customers. They are more free and they want to have colors and and they want to be a, a little bit more crazy. <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions. That uh, when I think of Swedish fashion, I think of um stark lines black neutrals and i also feel like um when you get to arlanda airport you can usually within about 15 minutes see what is trendy in sweden would you yeah. agree with that yes that's that's right especially if you uh, come to stockholm uh, where the the big chains like h and m and so on they are very dominating the market uh, so people think that they have to look at uh, the same as uh, H&M yeah. is saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, we, but Stockholm is very black and gray, I must yeah. say. But yeah. my customer is not in Stockholm. They are all around the world. I think right. maybe it's only 30% that we are selling in Sweden. Uh, we are selling in all other countries around the world. Would you say that is one of the reasons why you started exporting and going to new markets so early? Oh, yes, yes. Because I, I, I get more support, I must say, from the other countries or the, or the customers in other countries and customers in Stockholm. More fr from Norway and Denmark and, and uh, Germany. So that's interesting. Would you say that that is because colorful bright clothing are not um really popular in sweden or would you say that it's more that um it's a little bit that you can't be a star in your own hometown in the swedish view i think um, in 
bigger countries, uh, you can uh, uh, adopt different styles. In a small country, it's more uh, homogeneous. So, I mean, I can reach uh, a, a specific little uh, customer group in a big country. Mm -hmm. But in Sweden, uh, we are quite small and, and it's a, a lot of the same. Yeah. Uh, I would always wear the, same, the wrong clothing when I came home. Uh, you know, it was terribly unfashionable and I was always, <laughs> you know, my friends would roll their eyes at me. And, and then one of my friends said, say, well, it's, it's okay because you're a sporty type. So, so it was okay to have a colorful Gore-Tex jacket, uh -huh. but the rest of us, but, so I had to have a stamp to be uh -huh. a sporty because I was not fashionable. Would you <laughs> say that's true still? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. And I think I have studied how it is in Germany, for example, that is uh, maybe three, four different um, styles. You can look Scandinavian, and you can look um, German as they, uh, they look in Bavaria, and then you can maybe look French, Italian, and it's, this is different styles. And the Germans, they like the Scandinavian style, that is sporty and, uh, and uh, practical and so on. And also with uh, um, some bright colors. Right. But mm -hmm. so when, when you talk about fashions like that, would you consider yourself Scandinavian style then, even though we just said S Swedish mm -hmm. style is more neutral? I, I don't know if, if, uh, if people around the world really know the Swedish style. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, people in the fashion business, they know this black and white and gray, but uh, normal people, I don't know. Okay. No. How would you say that the fashion industry has changed? You've been part of it for so long. How has it changed? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I look at, in Sweden, for example, when I started in the 60s, I mean, it was a lot of industrial units in Sweden, but there is nothing nowadays. So this is a very big change that everything has moved out to China or to, to other parts of the world, to India for example. So this is a very, very big change. And when producing in, uh, in um, for example, India, you can uh, put a lot of details and embroideries and everything on the clothing. But when I was working in Sweden, it was not like that. You have to make it easy and easy to produce and, and so on. So yeah. this is a big difference. So I think that's that's something that people miss sometimes. I think that, um, you know, they're like, oh, you shouldn't produce in Asia because the quality should be produced in, in Sweden or in the U.S. And, but the, but the, the manufacturing skills are not mm. necessarily there anymore. Mm. Right? Mm. Uh, you mean in, in, in Sweden or in... Sweden, in... I think it's a little bit, not quite a little bit the same in the U.S. Uh, mm. In a lot of, like, people really, we want there to be manufacturing mm. close to where we live, but it's not necessarily true. No, and uh, uh, when uh, looking at the Indian young woman, for example, everybody in India, uh, they learn sewing, they learn embroidering and etc. So the textile um, production or, or handicraft is very near them. Yeah, which uh, this is not what it is in our uh, part of the world. We are more, I mean, for computers and, and all this stuff, but they are very near the, the textile production or handicraft. Yeah, uh, we, you, we, we moved our factory to uh, Estonia about 24 years ago uh -huh. from Sweden. Mm -hmm. Mm. And in the beginning, it used to be that you, you, it was really easy to get highly educated and experienced seamstresses. Mm. And that's getting yeah. harder and harder now. Because yeah. the, the only sewing education has been removed. So that's not there mm. anymore. So it's much, much harder to produce in Europe. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm. We produce a lot in the south of um, um, Europe. Uh, and it's only the, the, the jersey uh, items uh, because this uh, uh, 
items don't uh, need so much uh, uh, people to produce. It's, right. I mean, it's easy to make a top and that's possible to do in, in Greece or Portugal or so on. Mm -hmm. But if it's more complicated, you have to go to other countries, I think. Yeah. Mm. Um, so you have manufacturing spread out all over. Oh, yes, yes. And that is important also. I mean, see now during the Corona period, I mean, we had some in India and some in China and some in, in Greece. So we can, um, I mean, get produced everything we need. Yeah. Uh, but you don't know what happens in the world. No. Anything can happen. Yeah. And that we have learned now, I think. Um, yes, oh. for sure. Um, but you also travel a lot for inspiration, right? Yeah, yes, yes. Um, mostly I, I travel to the, uh, to the, uh, the pro producing countries as India or China and so on, and not so much just for in inspiration. Okay. Um, but, uh, but in India or so where you find a lot of inspiration from, from what they are doing in the textile area. Yeah. How do you, how do you find inspiration? How, how can you still, after all these years, come up with <laughs> yes. new patterns? <laughs> oh, yes, I wonder myself also sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm an easygoing person, I think. <laughs> yeah. As I say, looking at your patterns and your catalog and everything, it seems like you, this must come from an exuberantly happy person. Would you say that you are? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, I, I am a quite happy person as uh, personality. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, 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 uh, uh, but for example, uh, the other day, I, we begin with a collection for um, spring um, 2021. And I started with some flowers when I was painting and sketching, but after a little while, it was only fruits come out from my pen. <laughs> I think uh, so. This collection will be with different fruits, like the melons and the figs and the, uh, olives, etc. Oh wow, that's really yeah. That, I always but, admire people who can do that. It just comes uh, out. Uh, just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely does not happen when I put a pen to a paper, but. That's <laughs> Uh, but um, I am a pen person. I, I don't use the computers for designing at all. Really? But my people do it uh, in the process to get it ready for the production. But myself, I only use a pen or, or, or watercolor or, and so on. Yeah. Um, but that's old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of the, the production or the, uh, the, the process of getting new collections, so um, you obviously now are not doing it all by yourself. You have a number of people, I think mostly yeah. women uh, working with you. And, and I read that it, it's because everyone wants to have their I, item part of the collection. Mm. It's a little bit of a competitive environment, but kind of by design, would you say? Uh, yes, of course they want to have a part of the collection, but uh, often we find out a theme for the collection that we should do and then they have to follow the theme and then they present the sketches and so on and then we choose what we think is uh, the best okay. to, to, uh, to have in the collection. Mm. Does that create a, like, that competitiveness, does that create a... a um... What does that do to the atmosphere if everyone kind of wants their collection in there or uh, their but, uh, we we are I have two uh, senior designers and then there are maybe three um, junior designers and they must not sketch to value uh, to every collection it may be every third collection and so on so I mean mostly if they sketch they get something in in the collection okay mm -hmm. oh. Um, this is speaking of, of uh, your your uh, your company and your crew. I, I saw that you um, you only have women on your board, right? Your board of directors. Ah uh, yes, on, on the board it's only women, and it has been like this mostly all the years. Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming that's by design. And why is that? Uh, I didn't understand. What did you say? I'm assuming that that is 
what you wanted, your choice, right? Yeah, yeah. Why is and that? that's because uh, I am a woman, I, I think. That's why I, I maybe choose more women than uh, um, men should do. Mm. But you but, chose no mm. men. Mm. <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> I, I absolutely, but I wanted to say, like, uh, is that like, is there a reason for it? Like, why, why are there no men on your board? Oh. Oh, it's not needed. <laughs> okay. And this is a female business. I mean, uh, with clothing. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of women working in this business. So I mean, it's not uh, uh, uncommon, I must say. Uh. Mm. But if you had had a man as a CEO, probably the board should be uh, in another way. Probably, yeah. Probably. Um, so, um, so working with women, you know, can be, I think, you know, obviously the most uh, fun and rewarding. Um, mm. But sometimes, unfortunately, you know, it's not so much women lifting women as much as we want it to be. I feel like. Sometimes women can be really catty or, um, I don't know, jealous of someone who has more or does better or is more ambitious. Mm. Uh, what would you say about that? I don't know what I should say about that. Um, but uh, many in my um the highest level in my company they are has been in the company and grown up in the company and uh, and though it, this is the female uh, business so it has been i mean a, a, a normal f f uh, speed or maybe uh, that it, it comes out like that and we try, I mean, to get <laughs> men in the board too, <laughs> but it's not so hard, so easy to find. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what can we do, um, so as, as female business leaders, how, what can we do to support other women that are trying to find the same path? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the most important part is that women build up companies and build up companies uh, uh, which becomes big. And then, I mean, it will be much more room for, for women to come up on the higher levels. I think this is what is needed. But um, many women are so afraid of uh, uh, taking risks and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so this is, uh, I mean, something that um, uh, maybe women avoid to build up big companies because you have to work hard. It's not uh, easy uh, uh, to to build up a, a, a bigger company. Yeah. So and men are more uh, risk taker, I think. Yeah. Uh, and that's why it's more men building up big companies and they also sit on the highest level everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Did you always know that you were going to build up a big company? No, no, no. It just happened. <laughs> you think it's obviously an impossible question, but do you think if you were a man, would you have gone the same path or would it have been faster or different or... Probably faster, I think. Faster, right? Probably faster. Faster and more. And also, I have always uh, want to build up my company through own own money. Mm -hmm. And this is also that it uh, will not go so quickly. But I think uh, to have the power in your own money is is um, for me very important. Yeah, I'll have to uh, give credit to one man because my dad did exactly the same thing there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Money, long money, slow, steady growth. Would you yeah. say that's a Swedish trait? Slow, steady growth, is it careful? Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. But I mean, I, I think uh, I have put uh, a lot of uh, work and a lot of effort into my business and work, worked hard. Yeah. Mm. When you're looking back at your, uh, your journey, um, is there anything that you wish you would have done differently? Oh, certainly, certainly. Um, I don't know what I should answer really, but but I'm quite uh, 
comfortable with how I had built it up. Uh, mm. You must have done something, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> something. <laughs> a little bit, right? Uh, a little bit, right? A lot, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have not, um, I have only one son, for example. But if you have a big family with many children, it's, I mean, it's more difficult, I, I must say. Yeah. But, uh, but I was not able to, to get more than one child. Yeah. Mm. How do you balance your, uh, your work and uh, your life, uh, your, your yeah. non-work life? Yeah. Um, though I have two parts of, of what I'm doing. I have the creative part with designing and I have the business part. So uh, I, I think this is balancing my life, uh, which I, at, at, that I have these two parts. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, uh, is um, making a coll collection or or um, painting some uh, designs. It's like uh, to be uh, not work at all. Right. So I think this uh, combination is why I I don't really need so much free time as many other people do. Right. Because uh, uh. that is your. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what are, um, when you look at uh, your young self when you started the business, mm. what would you have told your young self that you knew now? <laughs> you wish you would have known then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the most difficult thing was the, the, the finance of the business, I must say. But uh, I think, I mean, um, as I have done, I have. Uh, build up my company with my own money and I have also have the power all the time uh, and I think uh, this I am very happy for I must say uh, yeah instead of uh, uh, getting loans from the bank or uh, getting money from from investors yeah. uh, then you are depending on them but uh, have the finance yourself then you can do it as you want to so is that your recommendation for women starting up businesses? Yeah, yeah. But then working hard, I think people easily forget. And I say to, to my young designers, if you don't walk, work more than eight hours per day, it will take until you are 20, no, until you are 50 years old, you are, are uh, skillful. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so, so is there an expectation to work more than eight hours a day? Oh, yes, you have to. You have to. You have to. Otherwise, it will be, I mean, then you maybe are 100 years old <laughs> before. <laughs> yeah. How has your, uh, your role or your, how, you, how you do things within the business, how has that changed over the years? Uh, how it does, I, what I have find is that um, designers, they can't use a pen anymore. They have to have uh, um, uh, computer systems mm -hmm. and that has changed the way you can um, make uh, a pro pro product. And I think um, uh, many of the young ones, they think uh, uh, that a good illustration or sketch is, is enough. Uh, but you have to understand this uh, nice sketch should be a product. And that is, I mean, a big change. I think that the, the people uh, don't see this uh, nowadays. Do, do you make them work on uh, paper or? Oh, yes, they work on paper also, mm, most of them. Because if you make it in a computer, everything will be very similar in right. uh, from the different countries. So you can't see the, the difference between uh, one uh, designer or one company uh, on one side and another one, because they make the same systems and they use the same systems. Right. So this is a big change, I think, uh, that has happened. And also for, for in the, in the, in the business is also that uh, uh, many people must use systems to calculate or to an analyze or so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is also a big difference. And I think um, 
uh, this is not so good. Uh, Sometimes it feels like computers have slowed things down. Yes, yes, yes. I remember when we started to produce our products in Illustrator, I, th I thought now we will have time to make a lot of more, more, more products, but it's more slow than making by hand okay, that yeah. we made many years. Would you say again, is that unique for you in the fashion industry or is that, are there still designers that work like you do? I think it, in the old, the older uh, designers that do maybe like me, instead of making everything in computers. Um, but the young ones, uh, they can't. They have to have uh, computer systems. Yeah. But uh, but maybe this is also um, uh, what they have learned. So they are very skillful also. Right. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. We, we are right now interviewing for a graphic designer. Uh, um, the marketing team and we saw the same thing that it's uh, there's some that can do freehand mm -hmm. but it's kind of all similar a little bit mm -hmm. but, uh, so about designs on different market do you make you don't really make different that's right you said you you make the same clothing for for the same markets right that the yeah. customer is the same no matter where mm -hmm. yeah yeah um the um what are what are we decided you haven't really made any mistakes right but uh what are some of the lessons that you have learned along the way what kind of lessons yeah um uh, what i have learned is also uh, the development of the company and when you start you are only maybe two persons yeah. and when you come up to to maybe 10 person, person you have to another uh, organization and then you come to 40 persons you have to have another way of working and now when we are nearly 400 it's a totally new way of of, of uh, conducting your company yeah uh, this i have learned and this i have to understand um, has, has that been hard uh, I think the first step was hard when I understand that I am not uh, a friend of my employees longer. Yeah. And now they are employed by me and I'm the boss. <laughs> that was hard. That is, yeah. Um, I think that might be one of the things that women, um, that causes women not to grow, like you uh, talked about earlier in the yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that you can't be friends with everyone anymore. No, and you will not be friends. You're the boss. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I think that's a really good, good. Mm -hmm. um, thing. So, do you think you will ever retire? <laughs> no, I will never retire. <laughs> never retire. Uh, yeah, uh, but probably I have to retire someday. <laughs> um, how has uh, how has um, COVID? I mean, we've touched on Corona and COVID. Um, a couple of times, but um, how has that changed how you can do business with, um, you know, I, I read somewhere that you really feel like that face-to-face -face contact is so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, the way we are co uh, making our conversation is the new way we have, have been able to learn now. Yeah. And, we, we, uh, and we have also find out this is maybe an, another way of working together, uh -huh. but it's not the same way as it has been. Right. Um, but uh, the contact between people, I mean, that has uh, um, disappeared now and that is very hard, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's not nice because we are used to... Uh, to um, uh, to be together, uh, we all people. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have, a, you know, I don't know when I can go home and 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 see my friends and my parents and in, in, in Sweden. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. And like you can't go out for concert or you can't go out and 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 doing a lot of things. All this month, maybe I have been around outside Stockholm maybe five times only. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, but that's when you is that you retreat to your um, archipelago the yeah, yeah yeah there I have been of course mm. every week or every second week but I mean to do other things it just hasn't been a possible do you feel, yeah hard. do you feel that that hampers your inspiration not being able to be out and see things oh yes 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 it um, yes it's not good for in the long term i think hmm. but it's not good and uh, in sweden we have had a little bit better than in other, many other countries but it has been hard it has yeah. been hard yeah and not nice yeah no mm. that that is mm. for sure mm. yeah um, it's it's difficult um yeah we're still all kind of working from. Mm. So now when we plan to do something, we have to take uh, uh, one hour away at, uh, as most <laughs> yeah. before you could travel to India or to America and so on. But that's not possible right now. Um, if, we, uh, um, if we bring it back to the museum and your exhibit, how uh, you've done a number of exhibits. How did that come about that you go from, you know, selling in stores and online to, uh, to doing museum exhibits? Yeah, I, it's mostly that people ask me if I want to do it. Yes. And, and then it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you um, enjoy doing those? Oh, uh, yes. Yes. It's very nice, but I'm not doing it myself. It's uh, my people or other people helping me with this. I uh, put some uh, inspiration into it, but but other people are doing it, yeah. not me. But I would say it, it's so much more than just a, a collection of your clothes. It really is about your story and your, your journey, wouldn't you say? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, mm. uh, it is. Um, so we have a couple of questions that we've gotten from, um, the uh via social media that uh mm -hmm. so we're not just doing my questions <laughs> <laughs> um so we have one it says in your opinion what sets you apart from other fashion brands or businesses uh, please say it again in your opinion what sets you apart from other fashion brands or oh. fashion businesses uh, what makes you different? How I am different, or yeah. 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 How how are you different from other fashion brands? Yeah, I think uh, one reason is I don't follow the trend, the fashion trend. This yeah. is one uh, reason, um, and I uh, I have also this uh, tight contact with my customers. This is also. Um, one reason and also that we I mean we design and produce and we also sell to the 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 consumer this is not like this all over the fashion brands yeah now I will jump in with my questions because that's something that you consciously it cautiously consciously did <laughs> the whole time <laughs> that you um that you'd never sold to any department stores or anything like that, right? I in the, I in the very, very beginning, I, I sell to other stores and to department stores. But nowadays, we never do it. We only sell uh, through our own channels. So you'd almost say that you're almost an internet pioneer because you were one of the, like a very early adopter to being having a website and then starting yeah. to sell online. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was uh, 97 uh, we started with a with a web shop online yeah uh, and that was a crazy time i must say we didn't understand at all what we should do <laughs> uh, but we made it in three language uh, very first time that's in german and in in swedish and english excellent that's mm. we still have swedish german and english um, yeah. websites um, a little um, slower than you are but still <laughs> that's uh that's impressive though that you uh that you knew right away that uh this was going to be the future yeah 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 and we, we i mean we have a lot of customers buying uh, 
uh, on mail order. So this was only a new technique uh, to support uh, or help the customer to buy. Mm -hmm. So it was the same, I mean, um, technique um, uh, earlier, but it's more handmade. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you still also, uh, we do the same, you still have a, a paper catalog. Yes, we have, yes. Yeah. And it's very popular, I must say. Yeah. Um, we thought some years ago that we were not going to be making our catalog for many more years because it was all online. You can download the catalog online, but um, people still want to have that paper copy. Yeah, yes, yes. So it is, yes. Um, and the, the, the catalog, I mean, people are longing for the catalog. Yeah. Uh, and I think right now we are expanding the, the catalog uh, production. But uh, as it is now, right now, That's interesting. that yeah. people are asking for catalogs. So we're saying the same thing, and, and that goes against the traditional wisdom of what people are saying. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'll go back to the social media questions. Uh, you have business presence in both Sweden and the US. What are the biggest differences that you have experienced in doing business in these locations? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I think uh, um, to understand people uh, in other countries and also to understand what they really are saying, uh, that's uh, a big difference when you're in other countries compared with being in your own home country. Uh, and it's also, I mean, the big differences in uh, in how um, how you employ people or, or so on. Uh, it's different, yeah. and and um, so we have to. I mean, we have to learn and understand that there are differences. Uh, and also, if we look at Germany, I mean, it, it seems quite similar to Sweden, but it isn't. No. It isn't. Mm. Interesting. Um, are there typical Swedish traits that can be noticed in your company culture? Oh, yes, I think so. Uh, I think so, but I don't know really. <laughs> uh, um, are there any specific things that you think are, are very Swedish? Or? I think uh, in Sweden, it's a lot of talking, a lot of meetings. That is typical Swedish. Sweden and we talk and we understand each other and we try to find out this is the way we should do. And the nice way with this talking is that then you start to work, then everybody know where we should go. Yeah. Otherwise we have to fight during the, uh, during the way. Right. So, uh, so maybe a more collaborate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Swedish way. Compared with, with Germany, for example, that's, uh, that, uh, they follow the rules and they are doing it until we just say, no, stop. Right. <laughs> In Sweden, they can stop doing things that they used to do and right. you don't see it at once. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, we kind of touched a little bit on how your business has changed, but would you say that the business climate has changed over the years? And if so, how? Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Probably it has changed, but it's a very slow change. Um, but I mean, now, for example, I mean, this change we are, uh, uh, we have right now with the, the digital uh, meetings and so on. This is a big change. It's a big change. Uh, how people should cooperate with each other and so on. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But it's hard to see really. Yeah. Uh, hard to see. But the, when the computer came, I mean the real com computer ca came into the company, this was also a big change, but you didn't see it really at that time. Um, right. It was more. Oh. <laughs> I have one more question on the, uh, on, from the audience. I know we were supposed to take a break and we didn't, but, um, oh. did you have any role models when you were building your business? Mm -hmm. I was, 
probably thinking a lot uh, about uh, the founder of um, uh, IKEA mm -hmm. because he he was uh, I mean very very good uh, and uh, he was really thinking of uh, his staff and also the customers and so on. Yeah. So this is a, a role, role model That's for me. Great. Yeah. Um, well, those are the questions that I got from uh, the online and then um, the ones with me. But um, mm -hmm. so there's obviously a lot of your super fans that are watching uh, mm -hmm. this. Is there something you want to say to them? Oh, uh, I'm so happy over all my fans, I must say, especially the American fans. They are so exciting yeah. all the time <laughs> and talking so much. And they want me to do things like this and this and this. So, uh, so this is uh, very, very nice, I must say, with the American customers. They are more direct than the Swedish ones. Yeah. Uh, mm. Oh, so this is I really like uh, from my and they say a lot to me that I, I it's good to know uh, if there are difficulties or they want to this and this uh, they want more red or more blue or, or more natural fibers and so on they are asking and yeah. saying to me so this is important yeah oh that's great um and then, of course, we really hope that the museum can open soon so that people mm -hmm. can really go and see your uh, exhibit. Um, and then hopefully that you can also come. Mm, yeah, I hope so. Because we had planned to come in in March, uh, very first time, and then we should go to, to Santa Fe, also have some holiday and so on, but nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, hopefully soon. So, but I really, really appreciate you taking the time uh, and answering all these questions and just talking. Um, it's been really, really, really nice to meet you. You are uh, quite the inspiration. So thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to see you and nice to talk. Yes, thank you. Gudrun and Petra, thank you so much for the stimulating conversation and for kicking off our Nordic Women in Leadership series. Um, we are pleased to present um, additional installments of this series in the coming months. Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you.